Welcome back guys, if you're new to this channel, click on the channel trailer above that will tell you what this channel is about, which is documenting the writing, recording and production of an entire album from start to finish in this, my home studio. The first song off this album project is a song called It Feels Like. This song was inspired by a Coldplay song called Army of One, which has a drum intro and then it has this epic huge wall of organs in and it sounds phenomenal and I wanted to replicate something like that or at least use that as an influence to get the creative juices flowing. So upon playing around with some sounds in Logic, playing around on the keyboards, I stumbled across a chord progression that is the introduction and the chorus progression to this song. Following from that and messing around with some chords, I came up with the verse chord sequence. What I wanted to do for this song was avoid a standard one chord per bar movement, which I've been guilty of overusing in the past. And uh, I came up with this. This is one of those songs where the initial melody and the flow of the vocals in the verse actually came quite quickly. But the wording and the articulation of the verse took quite a lot of rewriting. I was there with a the thesaurus trying to find better combinations of words. And I ended up, as I often do, coming back to basically the, the first variation of it. But I did end up redrafting these quite a lot. The chorus words came pretty much straight away and the melody pretty much wrote itself on this one. Sometimes these things happen, songs just come out of nowhere. I had envisaged a long crescendoing intro with these organs slowly coming up in volume and a heartbeat style drum beat dun, 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 in the background. Now on the lyric video I've actually edited this out because I wanted to get straight into the song to maintain everyone's attention. But when the song goes out on Spotify later this year you will hear the full organ intro with the heartbeats going underneath as well. Well, initially I had a killer's style, think Mr. Brightside guitar riff, which I'd written on the piano. And often with piano melodies, they don't always translate to the guitar. Here's an example of how that sounds. So when it came to recording this with real guitar in the studio, my friend David came up with an alternative which honours the original part that I'd written, but also makes more sense on the guitar and arguably is a better part. With the verse, bridge and chorus written, I wanted to go into a middle eight. Now with an idea of where the lyrics were going at this point, I wanted to create like a whirlwind, crazy middle eight section that just speaks of the chaos going through my mind and through the lyrics regarding this subject. The influence for this section is a bridge in a song called Follow You Home by one of my favourite bands, Embrace, and it's got this rolling snare drum rhythm which is driving and energetic. And on top of that, David came up with this awesome telephone effect guitar part which you can is, is kind of low in the mix but you can hear it and it just, I'll solo that actually. And it just adds to this intensity. And then on top of that, I had been playing around with some uh, Abbey Road plugins from Waves and they have this saturator plugin. And I just thought, right, I'm gonna use that on two different duplicate vocal tracks. One pre-delayed and one delayed upon the main track. And then one I'm gonna pan right slightly with one coloration. And then the other one I'm gonna pan the other side with a really heavy saturated color to it. And that's where you get this crazy vocal sound from. Check it out, because I think it sounds great. If you feel like the one, then you are out of your mind. If you feel that sensation, you are all out of time. If you feel this connection, you should run for your life. Cause there's no coming back from this black heart. And so you have found six feet below the ground. Following the craziness in the middle eight, I wanted to move into a soft, melancholic and kind of delicate section. I initially started out reintroducing the organ crescendo in the beginning. Then I had this head voice vocal idea over the top of it. And when it came to putting a guitar solo on it, David and I messed around with a few ideas and he came up with something and I said, yes, I want that, let's do that. And then he has just performed one of the most beautiful guitar parts I think I've ever heard. Now I am slightly biased because this is my song. However, check the song out because this part is particularly beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
So the way I've always demoed songs is just to program stuff in using a keyboard into Logic and using native MIDI sounds. And these are good to an extent, they're great for demoing purposes. However, with this track, I really wanted to get a full live band on it with myself playing drums and some of my amazingly talented musician friends to play on top of it. Luckily for me, my good friend Gaz Twist has a lovely home studio and we went there and recorded some drums. The first set of drums we did, we used some vintage ribbon microphones and upon listening to it when I started to mix it, I didn't really get the shimmer I wanted from the cymbals. I didn't get enough top end in the mix. So we ended up redoing it on when we were doing another session for something else and the result was great. I then went around to my friend Guilherme Aguirre's house who is a awesome Brazilian bass player and I'm gonna do an interview with him and we're gonna talk about the gear we used at his studio. He's got a little home studio set up as well. Then I had to book in uh, my good friend David de Andrade who is a phenomenal London session guitar player. Again, I'm gonna do another video interviewing him talking about the equipment we used, his amplifiers, guitars and pedals, etc. Keep an eye out for those videos. I then wanted to get a real organ. Now, I've done sound at a church in Spitalfields called CC Spitz and the very kind and lovely people there allowed me to come into the church and record their organ. They've got a huge organ. contacted their organ curator, a gentleman called Gerard Brooks, and we booked him in to do the session. Now, he, he's very busy, so it took me three months to pin him down for a date. So between rearranging some of the other sessions a couple of times, recording the drums twice, and booking in the organ player, it took me three to four months just to track this song. I decided on the next track, I'm gonna approach this differently. Instead of doing everything individually, I think it's gonna be a lot more time efficient if I get everyone in the studio on one day. Now recording the organ was an interesting task. CC Spitz Church is a huge cavernous venue. It has something like a 12 second natural reverb, which sounds great and I thought it would sound good for the organ. But when I came to mixing it, I noticed there was one note, there's an F sharp that's just slightly out of tune, and but it, it adds this dissonant sound to the organs. <laughs> Initially I first thought, oh no, this isn't, I can't, this isn't in tune, I can't use it. But mixed in with the sampled organ, it actually sounds good. And the dissonance kind of brings a, a bit of a feel to the track that I think, again, replicates just the darkness of the lyrics and the craziness of the song. So obviously I was always gonna record drums on this track, but part-wise it was something I thought about actually towards the end. The tempo of the song and the feel dictates a four on the floor pulse. And I was definitely influenced by the killers on this one. Sound-wise, I wanted to get something similar to the AM drum sound by the Arctic Monkeys. That album is great, and it's a great example of how less is often bigger. There's not loads going on with the drums on that album, but it just sounds huge. Simplicity can be good. And of course, all good songs need hand claps, so why not throw some of those in as well? I've programmed those. And my favorite part of the song is in the second verse and again in the outro which is a percussive vocal part i just had this drive for something but i didn't really want to do a shaker and i came up with this vocal part and i just think it adds an extra element along with the uh, very subtle guitar part that david's played in that second verse as well and i think that lifts the track and keeps it moving nicely so moving on to the vocals, I did have the idea for this track and this album project that I would get other people to sing on this. However, I'm quite particular and I thought the best way to get the delivery that I want is to just do it myself. Now, as we know, singing is possibly my weak link in this project, but this project is a development project to improve my writing, producing and singing skills. Uh, I started singing in my home setup, which at the time was a Focusrite Scarlett preamp and an SM57 microphone. This is a great setup to start your home studio and I'm gonna be doing a separate video to walk through that and explain why it's a good introduction into this home studio world. That was a great start for demoing the track. However, to get a better quality, I wanted to upgrade the microphone. So I started using a SE4400 condenser a microphone which is very different to the cardioid sm58 and it's a lot more open the quality's phenomenal but you're comparing a 100 pound microphone to a 350 pound microphone but moving with that the quality improved and i was quite happy with the sound i was getting 
However, still seeing the potential for more sound improvement, I decided to bite the bullet and buy a Apollo Twin sound card, of which there are gonna be a couple of videos on that. One explaining the UAD interface sound card system, and another one comparing the Scarlett with the Apollo Twin as well, for your own reference. So mixing this track, my initial idea was actually just to use Logic plugins and to see how my production skills would evolve with the introduction of other plugins further down the line. I then, however, thought, well, that's not going to be conducive for a consistent sounding album. So I scrapped that idea and started looking into plugins. I'd mostly heard about Waves plugins, so I started investigating some of those, and they're always doing sales, so I found some things on the cheap in there. One of which I stumbled across was the SSL channel strip, and immediately loved it, immediately started using it on everything, all the instruments in the mix, and I think that elevated the mix significantly from the Logic plugins. The one thing I was missing in this track, though, was a really good snare drum sound, and I'm a big fan of big 80s gated reverb sounds, and being a drummer, it's imperative for me to get the drums sounding good. And I kind of had a good sound until right up to the end of the mixing process. This is at the end of last year, that is. And so something happened in the mix, and I ended up ruining the snare drum sound. Then when I came back to remixing it, I had got into the whole UAD plugin world and applied some of those plugins and effects on the master bus as well. And I'm now very happy with the snare drum sound, but it took some work. I'm going to be doing a separate video on how I've got from dry drum sounds to the drum sound you hear on the track. Hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss that video as well. So the final thing to talk about this song I think would be the music video. The initial idea I had for the video would have involved hiring in a videography team actors and it would have been quite a big and reasonably expensive project to do well. Upon blowing all of my budget for the start of the year on the new studio setup with this lovely foam from Pro Acoustics, my Neumann speakers and my UAD twin and the satellite, links to all of which are in the description. Disclosure, this is an affiliate link scheme, so if you click on those, I will get a small commission, but that is much appreciated. And they're great products, so I can't recommend them enough. So the alternative to a full production video was to do a lyric video. Now, I've always been a bit skeptical about lyric videos. I've never quite seen the point of them. However, I then thought, well, if I can come up with a visual concept to go with the lyric video, then it's kind of going to be a music video and a lyric video in one. My initial plan, was to actually, and, and I recorded all the musicians recording the tracks for these songs. However, before I got into the YouTube project, I wasn't particularly up to speed with uh, video recording techniques. So I recorded them all at different frame rates, put them into Final Cut Pro, not really knowing what I was doing, and it's just a bit of a mess. Long story short, I couldn't be bothered sorting, the, sorting it all out. So I thought a lyric video was the best way forward, and some of the video snippets I've used for other videos. So for the lyric video idea, I had this idea of just filming a candle, and slowly over the course of the video, zooming in on the candle. And it's a lone candle and uh, take whatever representation you want out of that. Then in the middle eight, I wanted to replicate this lone candle to suggest that there are other lone candles or people on this journey, and they're on a similar emotional journey, as we all are. So guys, that's an overview of the song. That's how I've created this song. That was my thought process. Like I've said, I'm gonna be interviewing the bass player and the guitar player who played on this track. They're gonna be separate videos. I'm gonna be doing a detailed walkthrough of the drum sounds and how I've arrived at the drum sounds on the track. There may be some other videos I haven't decided yet, but please subscribe below, hit that bell notification button so you don't miss one of these episodes. If you've liked this video and found it useful, please hit that like button. It really does help me on YouTube and I really appreciate it. It. Thank you for watching and I look forward to bringing you some more videos. And it feels like something else is home.